morning. Thanks for joining me again. I'm sitting here with my morning coffee and this gorgeous children's book that I've read, I mean, maybe 20 times. It's so good. It's become one of our absolute favorites. This is a library copy, but it's one that absolutely belongs in our collection, and I need to pick up a copy for ourselves. It's called Bird Song by Julie Flett. Now, there are so many things I love about this book. I might have more reasons I love this book than the book actually has pages. Um, first of all, I love it that Julie both wrote and illustrated the book. Don't you just love it when somebody does an amazing job of writing the book but also illustrating it? Author illustrators mm, have my heart. So that has so much going for it right there. The next thing I love about this is the fact that it's a book that very quietly centers an indigenous voice. Uh, Julie is Cree Mati. Um, I hope I'm saying that right. I think I am. Um, I had to do a little bit of research to understand uh, that indigenous heritage and uh, basically uh, the history of this indigenous peoples is that Scottish and French traders in Canada um, intermarried with the Cree population and so the descendants have their own culture, which is called Cree Mati. And um, so to have an indigenous voice that is just quietly centered and that beautifully comes through this whole book, I absolutely love this. Um, now, look at the illustrations. It's a little bit dark, and I actually really like that about it because the little girl in this story is going on quite a journey. She's moving from her home by the sea uh, to a new home in the country with more trees, more land, more open space. This is one of my favorite illustrations where her first night in the new house, she and her mom snuggle in. To see that kind of close connection, that physical connection between mother and child, I absolutely love seeing that in a children's book. I think that uh, there's so many different ways of portraying closeness of mothers and children, but as a mom, those moments when a little one still creeps into my bed and, you know, has a bad dream but just needs some comfort and wants to snuggle with mom, those are precious moments and I think normalizing that for children, the comfort of snuggling in with your mom, and also speaking to that for mothers who know that these years are fleeting and you're not always going to have a little squishy one crawling into your bed with you for comfort in the middle of the night. Um, it's the details like that that make this a beautiful read both for children and for parents. I feel like this book is a celebration and an exploration of quite a few different themes and they all work together so beautifully. It's a celebration of life change. Um, Katharina, the little girl, is moving from one home, a situation where she has aunties and uncles around, to a very different place. Um, it's an exploration of the changing of seasons and what it is to be a maker, um, someone who's creative, an artist, within that changing of life, within the changing of seasons. Um, this book in so many ways centers on the creative process and to see that in a kid's book, I absolutely love it. It also explores the theme of friendship between the generations, which to me is a beautiful thing to see so lovingly portrayed. Agnes, her next door neighbor, is so much older and at first is able to really work outdoors with her and talk about making things and the artistic process. Uh, but as the seasons start to go by, um, quite poetically, the season of Agnes's life uh, begins to fade into a slowing down season that begins to, to creep toward death. And we are pulled into Katharina's emotions as she begins to realize that her friend is starting to wind down. She can't do some of the things that she used to. And the book doesn't do that in a big, scary way. It's a quietly creative way. Um, I think that's really a way to describe this entire book is that it's beautifully, quietly creative. 
It is about finding ways through your art to process life change for me. Um, perhaps I'm reading too much into it, but I feel like that was one thing that I, as somebody who really loves to create and make things, pulled out of this book, that Katharina is a maker at heart. Uh, she uses her art not just to express herself, but also to explore her feelings. And we see that in Agnes as well, who may work with clay instead of crayons and markers and pencil and paper, um, but is an artist as well. Um, it, this book is just absolutely lovely. Uh, I'd like to read you one of my favorite passages. Agnes has grown weaker over the winter. Still from her bed, we can hear the spring birds singing their songs and the trickle of the branches against her window. We listen to the sounds together. The snowdrops are peeking out. I wish Agnes could see them. I have an idea. I run home and gather up all my drawings. Agnes's daughter meets me at the door and we take two ladders from the closet. When we're done, Agnes says it's like a poem for her heart. Then I sit with Agnes and talk about making things. Mucky things and things with string and song and paper and words. And then we sit quietly together on Agnes's bed until it's time to say goodbye. I love it. The friendship um, that is shown here between the generations, the way of reaching across um, a divide that gets created as someone is less and less able to do the activities you're used to doing together. I love it that their friendship in so many ways centers around making, around the creative process. They are both makers in their own way. And the fact that they can celebrate that together is, I think, just an absolutely beautiful thing. The one thing I might like to see done a little bit differently within this absolutely gorgeous book is putting the pronunciation for the indigenous words directly on the page. I was on, I think, my ninth read through the book when I realized that here at the very beginning, there's a glossary with, you know, a very easy, clearly laid out way of pronouncing the indigenous words that are used in the book. I didn't immediately notice it because it's right in with, you know, it's just right on the front page with all of the publishing details and everything. It didn't jump out at me, even though I have lovingly sat with this book many times. And, um, you know, as somebody who loves to read books aloud to my kids and really tries to say things as accurately as possible, having a little guide right there on the page, just in small lettering down below on any page where an indigenous word is used, to me as a read aloud mom, that would be a valuable little detail on the next book. Um, Birdsong by Julie Flat, One of the most beautiful children's books that I've picked up in a while. It's absolutely gorgeous, both for its poetic writing the invitation into a multi-generational friendship that centers around making and a change in life, inching toward uh, passing on and doing that in a really non-scary but creative and beautiful celebration of life type of way. It celebrates many different changes for the protagonist, for the heroine of the story, the little girl that we follow and walk through this with. I also love that it's told in the first person. Uh, it doesn't always work so well when you're reading a book in the first person. It can feel a little bit awkward. It's natural and beautiful within this book. Uh, I love pretty much everything about this. Uh, this is one that I'd recommend investing in and putting on the bookshelf. Definitely a must own in my opinion. Love it. Can't wait to see what she writes next. My name is Anna. This is Mommy Turns the Page. We've been reading Birdsong by Julie Flat. Thanks so much for joining me.